Globally, we are in the middle of a crisis, one which has been papered over, resolving none of the underlying issues. The so-called solutions provided have only exacerbated the problems of too much debt. It's of course done on purpose to siphon wealth away from the middle class and into the hands of the few. There's no telling how far they will go. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today I have a really interesting video. I know this is going to be remembered for quite some time. Those who pay attention will certainly learn a lot. I know I did by reading through it. I am going to show you an interview that was done, and this is with a former biz central banker, a guy who's been working at central banks for 50 years. He retired in 2008, and he was warning about the financial crisis up until that point. This is the only thing I'm going to cover today, and although it's very different from, let's say, the chart GPS, where I'm showing you chart after chart, I know that this will be so informative. The reason I'm doing this here, I was trying to push it off and then I wasn't going to do it, but I'm just going for it because it really aligns with every single thing that I've been talking about here. We're going to look at the monetary policy. We're going to talk about fiscal policy. We're going to talk about the increasing debt and how if they continue on this path, a crisis is inevitable. And this is coming from somebody at a high, high level. So let's get into it right away. No more more delays, let's go. Central banks keep shooting themselves in the foot. William White, former chief economist of the Bank for International Settlements, is taking central banks to task. Monetary policy over the past three decades has caused, this is what he's saying, has caused ever higher debt and, this is the important part, ever greater instability in the financial system. This is what I talk about all the time. In fact, he mentioned so many points that I get into on virtually a daily basis that this is just so so unbelievable, all squeezed into one interview here. Fiscal policy must take over to deal with the current crisis. So this is what we've seen with all the different central banks. They're saying, hey, the government's got to deal with this. There's only so much we can do. And in that sense, I do agree with it. I don't agree with all his points. I want to make that very clear here. I don't agree with everything he's talking about and the solutions and so on. I'm simply going to point to the parts that I do agree with. And let's go with that. Okay, right here, really quickly at the top is just talking about the fact that he's been working for central banks for 50 years. Here he's just saying that they have actually created a policy that has relied on central banks and over the past three decades, causing a higher debt and greater instability in the financial system. And here he's just talking about the fact that fiscal policy needs to play a bigger role, more of governments doing stuff, more of what I... I could agree with, and that is productive investment. That sounds good. Instead of buying mortgage-backed securities, instead of buying toxic debt that nobody wants, you actually do something that is productive. Hopefully, there's some more of that come in, and largely, I just don't think it's possible, but at least that's where the um, direction is supposedly heading. The crisis of 2020 shows how little we know. We're dealing with a high level of uncertainty about its progression. We all need a healthy dose of humility. Having said that, I'd say it was the right thing to do to open the fiscal policy spigots to prevent the economy from crashing. I'm more skeptical of whether it's still easier monetary policy being the right answer for a shock of this character. And it makes complete sense. Why in the world would they reduce interest rates all the way and print a whole bunch of money buying mortgage-backed securities and treasuries to resolve the crisis that we're dealing with in 2020. It's absolutely true, unless you take it from a different view and realize they're not trying to help the public, they're trying to steal from them. In fact, I hope that we'll use this crisis for some serious soul-searching on whether the monetary policy of the past 30 years has done more harm than good. Can you believe it? A central banker is actually saying that. But anyway, here he says, to fight the immediate effects, there was not much else policymaking could have done saying that look this is all we have we have two things we could print money we could reduce interest rates those are our options let's do them both let's focus on the fiscal side first when is the time to withdraw support and he says oh no not now at all you don't want to do this the fiscal side they can pump up the deficits forever so you might as well do that and also to lock in cheap money while they can let's see what happens 
I believe that the Federal Reserve will be uh, doing uh, some changes in what they have with their monetary policy. They'll be buying on the long bonds and trying to get rid of some of the shorter dated stuff, Operation Twist and so on, keeping those interest rates real, real low. Uh, we'll see what the government itself does and I'll let you know of any important details as they come out. What I'd like to see is clear guidelines from governments about how they intend to get the debt levels down in the future. He's specifically saying that they don't want some massive cuts, don't cut too early, and this sort of thing. But what are they talking about? Of course, there's always tax increases that have to come. There's always expenditures that have to be cut. But you look at all of the solutions that they provide and it is never, never going to actually work. But he did point out something that I could agree Agree with they should use this crisis as an opportunity don't stop there because you know how they love to say uh, every crisis is an opportunity but check this out to cut subsidies that often go to special interest groups that don't deserve them anyway now that right there I can completely agree with but let's be clear this is not the time for austerity most governments entered the austerity path back during the global financial crisis too early and it left it to the central bankers to get the economy going sadly that's been the pattern for the past 30 years don't go into debt don't increase the deficits don't uh you know let the central bank do it either how in the world is this supposed to actually happen when everybody's getting strangled you have to basically take from the future that's what their whole plan has been by creating inflation steal from the future and people don't see it it's politically fantastic and so this is what happens once upon a time, it was accepted that fiscal policy could play a productive role in dealing with a severe economic downturn. But as we moved on, specifically in 1987, Alan Greenspan at the Fed monetary policy grew to be the instrument of choice for all kinds of crises. Actually, I've read a lot about this, about the monetary history of different governments and empires. I've read so much about the history. In fact, um, when you look at it, it is very interesting that what we we're seeing over the past few decades has been very unique to all of the history before it. Very, very different. And of course, you see more exaggerated uh, effects. So you would see like, you know, sort of the markets and the conditions, economy, like as time's moving on, things are just getting more and more out of whack. It's crazy. There used to be softer landings and of course, slower growth and things were a little bit more, I don't want to say flat, but let's say it was more predictable and today it is completely the opposite this is the big thing right here okay if you stayed with me this long i want to thank you for that i know this is not fancy but uh take a look what was wrong here well he said this is his quote we are on a slope where monetary policy has become increasingly i need to highlight this increasingly ineffective in promoting real economic growth now that's something i have mentioned a thousand times here what as they put in more you get less out how many times have you heard me say that please put it in the comment section to that effect of saying the same thing they pump in so much debt you get less growth out and that is documented in so many different places over a long period of time we shouldn't deny and I'm glad that I'm reading it right here from a central banker. Anyway, every crisis was met with monetary easing that caused debt and other imbalances to accumulate over time and that caused the next crisis to be bigger than the previous one. The next crisis then needed more punch from central banks. But since interest rates were never raised as much in upturns as they were lowered in downturns, the capacity to deliver that punch was decreasing. And I have mentioned this you know, so many times. And reading it here was so reassuring to me to see it coming from a high level individual like this. So I'm spending the time to tell you about this today. And I don't know how long I'm going to go on this video, but I know that it is worth your time if you're sticking with me. Definitely uh, stay tuned. I, I got so much to talk about here. 
And now we're looking at the crisis of 2020. In March of 2020, the financial system was on the brink of collapse with widespread panic in equity and bond markets. The Fed ended that panic by announcing that they would buy corporate bonds. Is that non-strong proof that monetary authorities are in fact very effective? And then he says this, the episode perfectly encapsulates my view of what's wrong with our monetary policy of the past few decades. True, the Fed had no choice to step in and prevent the financial meltdown, but this meltdown only happened because of the monetary policy followed over the previous years. And how true is that? We've been seeing it all along, that they created that problem, so they covered up by introducing more debt. And my goodness, how ridiculous that is. You see, by keeping interest rates too low and thereby trying to create economic growth, central banks are inducing corporations and households to take on more debt. To a large part, this debt is not used for productive investments, but for consumption, or especially in the U.S., for buybacks, right, right, right here, buybacks of shares. This creates a debt trap as well as rising instabilities in the financial system. These instabilities broke out in March and the Fed responded adeptly uh, to stop the panic. But my point is central banks are creating instabilities. Then they have to save the system during the crisis. And by that, they create even more instabilities. They keep shooting themselves in the foot. I know that's a lot. I know that was a lot of information, but isn't this completely what I've talked about? I mean, the buybacks of shares, the debt increasing, and every action that they're taking is actually making the system more frail, more fragile, and certainly a crisis is created out of this. Have central banks reached the end of the road? And he actually refers to Bill Dudley, which we did talk about here on this channel, if you remember, not that long ago. He warned that central banks have run out of firepower, and he warns that side effects are getting worse. I agree with every word. This is the most dangerous effect of the policy of the past 30 years, of monetary, uh, monetary policy of the past 30 years. Debt levels have constantly been building up, and so have the instabilities in the financial system. Here we go. This is exactly my definition of that trap. Central banks know that they can't leave interest rates low as they are because they're inducing still more bad debt and bad behavior, but they can't raise rates because then they would trigger the very crisis they're trying to avoid. There is no way out but to keep doing what you're doing, but by doing that, you're making it worse. Pretty uncomfortable, right? This is the trap that they're in. They've cornered themselves into the point where they figure we got to keep lowering interest rates. Okay, now we're at 0%. What are our other options? Well, we could do yield curve control that delays the inevitable. It doesn't actually really do anything. They can't go into negative interest rates because it's been a failure. Yeah, I think Sweden, I just saw, brought it back to 0%. I got to double check that though. When you look at the QE, I mean, they're all doing it at this point. Okay, well, that's our option. Let's just QE into the moon and devalue the currency until it is confetti. And then he talks about corporate debt, and I thought this was so huge, so important. Look at this. He's talking about the debt in the system. It's been growing like crazy. And then said this, it's not just the quantity of that debt, it's the quality. Most of the new corporate debt is BBB rated. And I talk about that so, so regularly, and you know that. Covenant light, low quality stuff. The reason for that is the ultra easy monetary policy we have seen post 2008. Governments made the mistake of embracing fiscal austerity too early. By that, they left their job to the central banks to frantically try to create economic growth. This is a mistake we must avoid after this crisis. Fiscal policy, blah, blah, blah. Okay, this is key to understand because he is highlighting so the points that, in my opinion, are so important. Now, I didn't touch on all the points in this interview. I, I would suggest that you check it out if you uh, want to look a little bit more in depth. I just tried to cover uh, the most important factors here. But look at this. So central banks tried to fight disinflation that was, in fact, benign. And he was referring to a previous period. But anyway, exactly. There are periods of low inflation or outright deflation that ought not to be a concern for central banks. If prices want to go down because of productivity increases, what's wrong with that? Productivity increases give you higher profits and lower prices, which is the way productivity gains are shared between the entrepreneurs and the customers. There is a raft of pre-war literature on the topic of benign deflation, but our central banks have forgotten about it. And I believe a period in the late 1800s uh, would be a good example of that. But what you see here is very obvious. They don't want to talk about this because they're always going for this ridiculous 2%, which is what they mention here. 
Here he's talking about the 2% and saying basically there, there's no point in trying to get the decimal place. Okay, we're at 1.6. We needed to get to 1.7 and so on. It's just not going to have any real impact on the system. It's largely just worthless to look at. And here talks about there is no return back to any form of normalcy without dealing with the debt overhang. This is the elephant in the room. If we agree that the policy of the past 30 years has created an ever-growing mountain of debt and ever-rising instabilities, then we need to deal with with that okay two more things stick with me really quickly i wanted to mention this because it's something that i see all the time oh they're going to print forever the stocks will go up forever everything will continue forever and according to this central banker here it's not the case here saying that they're going to continue on doing what they're doing and he says you are right my colleagues at the biz and i have been warning about this debt trap issue for 20 years i'm reminded of the economist herb stein who once said that if something cannot go on forever it will stop and isn't that so important to look at when you see it in reference to the central bank and their activities here he mentions the fact that, look, it can go on longer than you think. But in his words, it should be agreed that this path is not sustainable, it leads to bigger crisis, and it's an absurd proposition to stay on that path. Okay, last point I want to make really quickly. Knowing that the complex adaptive systems are prone to tipping points, what could derail this system? He's saying one of the conclusions of the complexity literature is that the trigger itself is irrelevant. If the system is unstable, anything could be a tipping point, even if the instability goes on without incident for years. That's what we're dealing with today. It's just going up and up and up in the markets. You are seeing the housing prices increasing like crazy. But again, take the episode of March 2020. 20 when these corporate giants in the u.s were wobbling the fed stopped the panic what if the market at that point had lost confidence in the ability of the fed we only know that in hindsight it worked but we don't know how the system will react in the future in fact we know much less than we think we do which is something that both hayek and keynes commonly uh, described at being uh, being at all odds totally understood central bankers indeed all macroeconomists should be much more humble than they are and that's something that i always believe that i don't know really that much but i study every single day i am a student of this and i'm trying to learn more and more and i know that somebody who stayed to the end of this video certainly is part of that as well we're just trying to learn we're just trying to understand and we are presented with more questions than anything else but at least we are knowledgeable about the system and what's happening and what's underlying it and what has been done to put it in this position that we're in today i want to thank you very much for sticking with me here i know that this wasn't so flashy and entertaining and we could be talking about politics and we could be talking about cheerleading for this team or that team but honestly it's just not important we need to be focusing on things like this because i'll tell you right now i'll be referencing this one for a long time that's all for this video if you found that informative hit that thumbs up button if you do you're supporting me just by clicking one button thank you very much if you want to learn how to sell stuff online i'm talking about e-commerce right now it would be a fantastic time to get in i created this course a year ago and only 8500 or so people have joined in so you should be one of those it's free the amazon gps.com Look, if you want to know the financial system, I want to talk about the central banks in here. You want to know about interest rates and everything that they've done. It's all in these two books. Check it out at the link in the description if you want the audiobook instead, themoneygps.com. If you want to know what's really going down, I talked about so much in this video. Definitely check it out. Click it. I'll see you there.